The internet is a remarkable tool that allows us to communicate with audio, video, text, and other data around our home, to our neighbors, and around the world. The internet's design allows all to interact with no central authority. It is a bastion for free speech and an informed society. It is also a tool that can be used to monitor, influence, and outright control society. We will examine what the internet is, what is being done to monitor and control you, and what can be done to keep the internet the powerful tool it can be for freedom of thought and speech. What is the internet? Technically, the internet is a bunch of computers, routers, electric and fiber optic cables, and wireless devices, etc. that allow our computers to talk to someone else's computer. Who owns the internet? The internet, just like public roads, belongs to everyone and no one. We all have access and varying degrees of responsibility. Who pays for the internet? Just like public roads, the internet has a real cost, and those costs need to be paid. But unlike public roads, the internet is not a government entity, although its origin is from U.S. military funding. The network itself, the mechanics of communicating from one computer to another, is provided by Internet Service Providers, or ISPs. We pay an ISP for access to the internet, and they in turn communicate with each other. Who funds the free services? It has been said that there is no such thing as a free lunch. In general, this is true with the free services on the internet. Many services, like broadcast radio or television, are funded by advertisers. It is to the advertiser's benefit to get their message out. They want you as a customer or to agree with their cause, and there is a significant payback for them to advertise. How do advertisers choose what and where to advertise? Advertising services advertise their service. They need to convince potential advertisers that they offer the best return and assure current customers that they need not look elsewhere. Internet advertising services are no different than print or other outlets. They propose that they know the customer on the web better than others and can deliver better performing advertisements. How do advertising companies know to whom to deliver a particular ad? Unlike broadcast radio or billboards on the highway, there are remarkable and expanding tools for internet advertising services to know the customer, to know you. Internet advertising services try to find out as many small pieces of information about you, put them all together, and form educated guesses about what you would be interested in seeing in an ad. This may seem benign and perhaps useful, but it isn't. Where do they get the information about me? Virtually everything on the internet can be logged and viewed by computers that monitor what you do. Trivial pieces of information that we would normally not give a thought to are accumulated in massive quantities. Using the aggregate data, those that have this, this data get to know you and in many areas of your life better than you know yourself. Let's look at a simple advertising example. Let's say you use a free email service and send a message to a friend that talks about your interest in traveling to Dallas. Sometime later, you browse the web and look on sites that have ads generated by the same company that provided your email service. While browsing, you find that more ads for hotels or car rentals than you are used to seeing. Perhaps there are ads for sporting or entertainment events in the Dallas area that you normally would not see if you lived over a thousand miles away. Why do these ads suddenly become a viable option for the advertising service? Because you told them directly in your email that you were going to be in Dallas. There isn't a person who sits behind a desk reading your email, but there are literally thousands of computers that are doing just that. Early in internet advertising, the technology might simply have noticed the word Dallas and guessed about travel. However, as technology has advanced, what is derived from your email is astounding. Isn't this benign? Often for advertising, the results are simply a more applicable ad to the viewer, which benefits all involved. However, now that we have a basic understanding of how this works, let's apply it to governmental monitoring. Governments, for the spoken reasons such as preventing illegal activity or terrorism, will monitor their populace with similar tools but with much greater depth. Does the government monitor the internet? The government leases rooms in communication centers around the world and places in them massive computing and storage capability. 
all traffic that comes into the communications center is split off and sent to these rooms. In the 1990s, these systems were fairly simple, such as the FBI's Carnivore program. Now we have systems like the Nerus Intercept and the like that go way beyond those early days. The technology is still young and the abilities will grow immensely. Does this apply to my phone call? Many of us use cell phones that can accept voice commands or speak to our computers and have what we say appear on the screen. We take the same technology and apply it to every phone call being made. You now have text from phone calls that can be examined by computers, just as our advertising company found that we were going to Dallas. Is it just the words I say, or is there more? There is far more. The time and place you do things is kept in logs. Your cell phone on your person allows a detailed record of where you are and who you're with. Your questions sent to search engines tell what you're interested in, legal, moral, or otherwise. Using mapping services tell where you are interested in. Is this information really used? Yes, it is not hard to find news articles about a music or movie pirate that was tracked down through internet logs. Hackers who get caught are usually caught through these records. Keywords are used to search communications for potential terrorists. Location tracking is used to the extreme. Freedom of Information Act requests reveal that the police forces in the U.S. use cell phone position information to track drug-related cases a million times a year. The intelligence community has much greater resources and releases no information of what they have or what they use. Do I have to submit? No. You are under no obligation to be monitored in the smallest details of your life by corporate or government entities. You can use the internet in a secure, private, and anonymous way. Shofar Portfolio is the tool to make this a reality. What is the mentality behind Shofar Portfolio? Shofar Portfolio interfaces like other standards-based internet services, but goes through great lengths to remove as much tracking information as possible. Shofar Portfolio provides a parallel set of services that use the fundamental communications elements of the internet, but puts security and anonymity first. When both parties communicate via Shofar Portfolio services, all information is hidden from view. This goes way beyond end-to-end -end encryption, but to the point that Shofar Portfolio service providers do not know and cannot know your data. Therefore, our motto, we don't know your stuff. Are we just putting our security into someone else's care? If Shofar Portfolio was the sole provider of these services, then you have a real concern. However, Shofar Portfolio does not offer the services, but only provides the software free for others to operate. We desire to work with literally thousands of family-run enterprises running servers. Each is independent and there's no financial connection between them or to Shofar Portfolio. There is no central authority, no central point of corruption. Is this available now? We desire to be fully operational in the spring of 2012. We need the financial resources to make it happen, and we need the families that want to operate one or more servers. How do I find out more? Find Shofar Portfolio on the web at shofarportfolio.com. We don't know your stuff.